this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to use our markers ba quite basically so how to get the best out of them so we're going to start at the beginning and then we're going to have a look at how to add some fine detail so we're going to use both ends of the marker the brush nib and the fine nib and we're going to look at how to color something as beautiful as this lily so I'm going to pop this down and we'll get started so what I've got here is a lily which has already been stamped. Now it's important to use the correct ink when you're stamping. I always use a permanent ink so that would be something like VersaFine or Stays On because we're adding water you don't want that black to mix in with all of your other colour. So I've got this pre-stamped ready but you just need to make sure that you either use a VersaFine or a Stays On or another type of permanent ink. So once it's done like that we can then start and colour it in. And it's really simple. So I've got two colours here from my uh, collection. I've got one from the Essential Collection and one from the Floral Collection. I've got Peach and I've got Scarlet. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop down my Scarlet colour using my brush nib. And I'm going to start on this little petal here. So what I'm going to do is just pop in to the centre where it will be darker. So where the darkest colour would be, which is always the central um, petal of a lily and I'm going to pop that colour down and then I'm going to take my peach which is the lighter tone I'm going to blend out into and I'm just going to go around the outside of that petal there of the darker colour and add the peach down. Now it's important to mention that I am using watercolour card. This is Crafters Companion watercolour card which I adore. You get beautiful movement of ink, lovely vibrancy. You can see I get a beautiful stamped image on it. So that's what I would recommend. But it's very important when you're using water-based markers that you do use a watercolour card or paper to colour onto. That's how you'll get the best effect because it allows your ink to move properly. Now I've just got a paintbrush. I've wet my paintbrush in my water here and then I'm taking off the excess on a piece of absorbent paper. That's really important. Um, you don't want to flood the area. And then what I'm going to do now is creep into. So if I go in the centre here and come out in colour, I'll obliterate all of that beautiful peach because I'll just drag the red out and I don't want to do that. So when I'm watercolouring from light to dark, you start at the outside edge and you creep in. And I'm just agitating the colour into the centre and you can see how that's picking that up and giving me that lovely effect into the centre there which is diffusing all of that colour. Now what I will do is clean my brush and take off the excess because I want to bring some of that colour to the outside but I don't want to drag the dark pink from the centre all the way out to the outside of my petal because I wouldn't get a very good effect. And in a second I'll show you what happens if you do do that because it looks completely different. So we start from the outside and we creep in to bring that colour out. And that's how you get a much better um, and softer effect. And you can keep cleaning your brush and tip it, taking off the excess as you go. So there we go. And then I'm starting to get a lovely diffused colour on my petal. Now I might want to add a little bit more intensity in there. And if I do, I can go straight back in and add a little bit more of my deep colour over the top. You can see that already looks more intense. Take off the excess always on the absorbent paper and then just creep in again to bring that colour out. And I'm not going right to the edge because I want to preserve my highlight all around the outside so that the petal does look dimensional. There you go, clean my brush, take the, uh, the excess off and then just diffuse the edge. And you can see how that's really starting to build it up. Now if I just show you on another petal here what I asked you not to do, which was start from the centre and drag it out. Oh, wrong one. You'll see the difference. So we'll put in the red. Putting the peach around it. Okay, and now this is not what I would suggest you do, but I, I do want you to see what it looks like. If I go in and take my colour straight out from the centre, it will start to overtake the rest of the colour, and I don't get the dimension that I got before because it just colours the whole thing in in a flat pink colour. 
and that's what happens if you start in the center and drag the color out what you really want to do is start at the edge and creep in okay so that's one way now another way you could color a leaf if you want to a petal i beg your pardon another way of adding color is not to work on dry card but to work on wet card so i can pre-wet this petal here and I'm just going to show you I've got here um, one of those fab Teflon craft mats and I'm going to scribble onto my Teflon craft mat a little bit of the red ink so what I can do is damp my brush pick up the ink from the Teflon craft mat and then add that in and I can start to build up a softer effect and build up the colour directly before I've put it straight onto the card so this is just another way of doing it and you're going to you know there's lots of different types of projects you're going to be working on you're going to find a way that works best for you my particular preference is the first one I showed you where I put it on and then I creep in and drag the color out I like to do that but there are going to be occasions when you want to absolutely add some ink into a white area as I'm doing here and then to diffuse it, I would just use a clean brush and drag that ink out to the side there. So it's a much softer effect. It doesn't have the intensity of the first two. But if that's the effect you're looking for, then that's absolutely fine for you to do that. So once they're dry, um, and I would leave it to dry for five or ten minutes, or you could blast it with a heat gun if you want to do that. Then we can go in and put in our fine detail. So what you would do is literally just take the fine detail nib from... Uh, the aqua marker and then I'm going to just flick that in so we know that lilies have that beautiful um, I don't know what would you call those lines I have no idea detail on their petals I'm sure there's some technical botanical name for it that I'm not aware of but I can go and add that in straight away and you can see how much more effective that is than the two that I did previously by just being able to go in and add that fine detail with the fine nib. I think it looks fabulous. If you wanted to soften it, you could leave it to dry for a couple of seconds and then with an almost dry brush, you could just go and dab over the top and that will take away some of the harsh edges but still leave the detail in there for you. See how that starts to look really lovely. And just be careful not to drag too much of the colour out. So once you continue to do that, I've done two here. So I've done the base, which you can see is much paler. I've done another one and cut it out and I've 3 d it over the top. And then I've done exactly the same effect in some green for the little leaves. And that's how we get that beautiful watercolored lily effect. So it's very quick, very easy, very simple, um, but beautiful results and really a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs>